Traders, I want to welcome you to today's AMA, also known as an Ask Me Anything event. I am your host, Sean Kozak, founder of NeuroStreet and partner of ARC. Uh, we're going to quickly start off with uh, a disclaimer because the risks associated with trading do uh, need to be discussed. If you are here, uh, you're here on your own merit. We're not here to guarantee results nor promise you anything. We're here to educate, instruct using our products and services. And if you do place risk capital in the markets, please do so at your own discretion. Please note that past performance never guarantees future results. So if you do trade with your own money, be, be mindful of that, right? If anybody has any problems or any questions on, on uh, risk disclaimer, you can reach out to our team and we can get you in touch with legal. That being said, um, have absolute money abundance, Lisa's, yeah. So what I want to do today is I want to kind of talk a little bit about the extension from yesterday's webinar. And yesterday's webinar was kind of the introductory event to the Unizone software. But what many of you don't know, and maybe what we should do here before I get a, a census of the group, how many of you are not in the prop program? Can you just type a no or an N if you are not a member of our prop trading program? I just want to know how many of you guys are not members of it. Uh, Paul says no. TJ, Thomas, not yet. Semi, Narish, no. Okay. For those of you that are not members of the prop trading program, uh, yesterday's webinar would have been your first exposure to the discussions around the Unizone software. Steve's not, okay. However, the Unizone software has been a much uh, anticipated topic, uh, mainly because we're using support and resistance and levels for some of the trading strategies that we use in the prop program, okay. And what we normally do in the prop program is we have several strategies. We have the AT system, we have the volume rotations. And what we've been doing, myself, Roy, our lead educator, and Bobby, the assistant hand uh, in the room, is we've essentially been putting together different trading systems using the tool sets that we use primarily in the program. And the goal of our prop program is to get funded and to stay funded as a prop trader, right? Well, that being said, the Unizone software is a, is a double-edged sword. It will serve a purpose in the prop program for the other strategies that we use it for. And then it will also serve a purpose for the new setups that we're gonna be teaching moving forward with regards to uh, order blocks, as well as volume rotations, as well as supply and demand price breaks coming uh, in directional markets. So what, we'll, what, what I'm gonna do here is I built a workspace um, and yesterday was, I, I put a lot of emphasis on smart money concepts. I put a lot of emphasis on higher time frame trading charts, right? Mainly because I wanted to save today for intraday trading and more around the environments of scalping and day trading because predominantly our prop program is full of scalpers and day traders in funding programs as well as you know trading as a day trader okay so this this um this workspace that you're seeing is kind of a modified workspace it does it does everything uh to serve this purpose and i'm just going to kind of explain what you're seeing here so you know how i'm going to direct this ask me anything this is a chart of futures and it's on higher time frames. So if you're going to do smart money concepts on higher time frames, you know a good example would be the the 240, then down into the 15, then down into the five, right? That would be a, a concept that you could do on futures if you choose to. The other thing here is also on forex. You're going the 240 down to the 15, down to the five. Uh, these other charts have the zone software in it, right? And and uh, these are these are are mainly what we would consider smart money layouts. And yesterday I touched base on that. Um, we're going to dedicate a, an event to smart money trading concepts over and above today's webinar. So if you're somebody that's looking to trade Forex or if you're somebody that's looking to trade, you know, futures, but on a little bit bigger time frames, um, you know, mainly for big trades. And you might want to trade them on micros for futures if you're trading futures for that. Obviously, the full contracts, you don't want to be trading with huge stops because it's just crazy. But 
that being said, we built this layout to kind of serve a purpose. So if you did want to just say, click on this market analyzer, it could give you a roster of all the charts down here and it's connected through an instrument link. So if you click on these, it'll basically toggle through whatever market you want to do your analysis on. I did the same for Forex so that you can click on the majors here that are pegged to the US dollar. And it'll basically just load the two, the four hour, it'll load the 15 and the five minute. You can adjust these timeframes as you see fit. But what I want to talk a little bit about today is futures scalping. And I want to talk a little bit about why the layout that you're seeing has been chosen for this discussion and this demonstration. Over the past several weeks, um, we've been teaching concepts in our prop trade room on volume rotations. And what I want to do is I want to introduce what we call order blocks and supply and demand levels on the same charts that we're trading the volume rotations so that you can use the uni zones for really good trading locations over and above everything else that we're trading as an added benefit and as an extension. Now, I normally like to talk about whether success is being achieved before we try to, you know, start just leading with, you know, here's a concept, go and trade it. I don't want to treat everybody in here like the guinea pig. That's not the point. Uh, Bobby, uh, as you know, Bobby does a lot of trading. He does a lot of testing with me. Bobby works with me in, in, you know, pretty, pretty tightly in, in testing and building out the workspace. He works with Roy very, very, very tightly as well. And to kind of prove a concept, what we normally do is we'll normally trade concepts, you know, myself, Roy, Bobby, we'll trade strategies before we teach them, right? Before we kind of go in and actually start trying to show other people, hey, this has merit, or this is something that's worthy of learning right and you know normally what i like to do is just kind of put 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 you know you don't, you don't want to put your foot in your mouth right this is a this is an event of of transparency it's also an event of learning and so there's an example bobby sent me the performance report this morning uh you know it's only the last couple of days uh july 11th to the 14th today is the 14th and this is trading volume rotations and order blocks and supply and demand levels on the volume charts. So the things that we're doing were are very, very successful. If you're a trader in here and you're scalping and you're looking at trying to build some type of a game plan, you know, you don't need to trade everything under the sun that we teach you, but I would really encourage you to learn some of the things that I'm about to show you and, you know, kind of discuss with you because it's not just about selling products. For those of you that are not members, or even if you are members and you have to make a decision, should I buy the software, should I not? I don't understand it, I wanna learn it. We want you to know that it, it's working very, very well if you're gonna ever consider something. Does that make sense? Give me, give me a yes. If that makes sense, it's fair, it's not some big pitch. This is a learning event for most of the, most of the traders in here are already very avid members and they're very a part of our inner circle and so you guys understand that right for anybody that's new in here or anybody that's kind of on the fence or just kind of getting their bearings or trying to figure out hey what is the zone stuff i'm here to tell you that you know we put our money where our mouth is our traders our prop traders our educators are funded traders we trade funded accounts you name it we're only here to demonstrate what we're doing okay now that being said i want to talk to you as to why i'm using volume charts Okay, volume charts are different than time charts. Volume measures the amount of transactions to the buy side or to the sell side liquidity, right? Unlike time, time is a, a static variable. Time is measured over, you know, seconds, minutes, and days and weeks, right? Hours. Volume measures the, the actual transactions. So when a bar closes up, it's because the buying pressure of volume is driving the market up versus down where time time will just literally trade random bars so if there's no volume price will not plot well the two biggest things you need to understand in the market if you're going to trade anything okay let me just grab this just so you understand this and this is really important there's three big things there's two big things you need okay you need volume you need range Without volume and without movement, you, traders can't actually make money, right? But then the question is, well, why do traders use time charts? Well, Forex trading is different. You know, Forex trading, you know, you're, you're 
you're trading in an environment where volume is not really known as much. I, I argue that it's not really the case. I mean, most now you can use uptick, downtick distributions and our volume software works quite well on volume. But to load a volume chart on the Aussie dollar, like we could convert it, but you're looking at several million, like, like I got to load a volume chart that's tracking 35. Let's take a look at the Aussie dollar right now. If I were to convert the daily volume on the Aussie dollar, I think that's 35 trillion. I don't even know if that's even correct. It could be 30. Yeah, it's definitely not 35 million. It's 35 trillion transactions. Okay. <laughs> so loading a 35 trillion volume chart on a platform just kind of seems a bit rare. And at the same time, most Forex traders all over the world are using time charts. So there's an added benefit to looking at, say, a Forex chart on a time-based fractal because I would argue that 80% of the Forex traders are price action based. And, you know, one of the things you, we need to know is that if, if the majority of the market is looking at time charts for that reason alone, then there's merit to using a time chart because it has a lot of value. But for futures, okay, I'm here to tell you that volume is very, very important in futures. Order flow is very important. Uh, supply and demand levels based off volume analysis is very important. And so the reason we prefer volume is because not only does volume have an added benefit in the futures markets, it has a lot more added benefit when you're reading structure analysis. Okay, now I'm going to give you an example. If I have a chart, okay, if I have a chart and I'm gonna grab a cursor here so I can draw on this. If I've got a chart and it's coming down like this and all of a sudden the candle closes above a level and it closes up here, that means that the, the volume had enough power behind the conviction of buyers to close above a certain area. Thomas is asking a great question. Thomas is saying, why not tick charts as opposed to volume? It's really a preference, but volume measures the number of transactions versus tick charts measures just transactions. It actually, it, contracts that are actually exchanged, traded contracts, right? So it's a preference, um, you know, could you test tick charts against volume? You could, uh, I just have always been more gravitated to volume because volume tells a bigger story than tick data. Ticks coming in on a, in another market is, is fine, but volume, if volume is closing at the highs or the lows of price or if volume is breaking structure, that's a different story, okay? And so good question though, Thomas. <laughs> The thing here is, is what I've done is you can't just randomly pick volume charts. Like if you're taking an S&P or crude oil or the NASDAQ, there are different markets. They, they basically will trade different amounts of volume, different amounts of range. It, they're independent assets. So what I did was I've built, um, I've built a, a conversion document and I'm going to give this to everybody in here. Um, maybe what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it to Roy and Jim and then Roy, you guys can give it to uh, Ben and you guys can post this. Uh, I need to go in here and make sure that I can share this. Give me one second. The owner restricted anyone with the link. A viewer. Uh, yeah, viewer, and you can you can take a, so I'm going to just put a link in here. Let's see if this works. I'm going to give this to everybody here now, and uh, you're going to make a copy of it. So what you do is you go in here, you go file, make a copy. Okay. And what this is going to do is this is going to basically give you a month worth of legs. So I basically, it's taken me a month to build this it may not look like something easy or may look like something easy, but it's not. Uh, we have software that is built to convert fractals. So what I've done is I've updated the data as of today. So if you're in our prop program or if you're an educator or if you're a member that's just kind of getting your feet wet with us, I've updated these fractals today to give you a breakdown of what the data is. 
you're going to see these are the S&P, the full contracts, and you're going to see that these are the micros, and these are the same in equivalence to range or Renko charts. For this event, I'm going to focus on the top tier of volume. And these are all, these all have formulas in them because they're all linked. What I did was I converted the one minute fractal across all of these market. It won't permit to make a copy. Well, then let me try to fix that. Give me one second. It does. Yeah, Phil, you should, it does. So you just got to go file, make a copy. Yeah, it works. Just download it. Or you can just download the document. Yeah, either way. Yeah, copy works. Okay, you guys are good. So just so you guys know that I went and I converted the one minute fractal across all these markets. And then I simply just multiplied by two, three, four, five, 15, 30, 60, 2, 47, 20 daily and weekly. So if you're somebody that does want to use smart money concepts on futures, I would argue the fact that, you know, loading a bigger volume chart and doing them on volume fractals will be a bigger advantage to you than just say using time charts. So I'm going to do a webinar on that because I'm going to be building a workspace for smart money concepts on volume charts after this event. Now for the main thing I wanted to talk about is there's a reason I have these markets highlighted. You're going to see that the MNQ has some red text the ES and the, and the crude oil market have some red text in here, okay? Well, there's a reason for that. If you look over here at this market analyzer, I want you to pay attention to a few things, okay? Just a few things that's really, really important, okay? If you look here, this is the S&P. <laughs> Out of all of the futures contracts, the S&P trades the most volume. The NASDAQ, if you compare the NASDAQ to the MNQ, this has clearly got two times the volume. So if you're going to trade the NASDAQ, it makes sense to trade the market where the traders are, not the old full contract. So I would argue that trading the NASDAQ MNQ would be a more strategic advantage using any trading strategy right now, mainly because it has higher volume. And the S&P, you could see that it's arguably pretty close you could use the MES or you could use the full size contract. It's up to you, but the full size contract is where the volume is. So then you can pay attention to that. And then if you look at crude oil, you've got crude oil here versus the micro crude. It's two times the volume on the full size contract. So I would argue that you should be trading the full size lot on crude because you're going to have weird behaviors on the micro. They're not tick for tick and volume respects the full contracts more than the micro. And I'm just trying to give you some an advantage. Bobby and I were talking about this today about like, why do we want to choose these markets on these types of strategies, right? I mean, trend line breaks are different. Like these, it's a di if you're trading volume strategies and volume order block levels and these types of things, like it, you should understand that, right? Yeah, I've never tried that, Graham. I've never tried to apply the indicator multiple times on the chart. Um, so if you are having any types of experiences, send an email in. We'll have, uh... <laughs> well, David, here's a question. So only for volume we use full. Well, this is a preference. Like I would argue that most people may or may not want to trade the full size contract on the S&P just due to risk. Right, it's a preference. Um, but you know, ultimately, if you look at the conversion for documents, I'll just kind of show you here. If you look at the S&P for the five minute, like the five minute for the MES normally trades about 1300 contracts. We just had a high volume day on the MES. But if you look at it, you know, normally the average volume across the last three years of data, the full size contract trades about 2500 contracts per minute and the MAS trades about 1300. So by definition, the full contract has more merit in terms of volume, okay? Now, that doesn't, I'm not sitting here saying you should do something, you should do that. What I'm here to tell you is that, you know, you have that advantage of deciding which ones you want to trade. And the reason I'm sharing this with you, and I'm just gonna close this down here for a second. The reason I'm sharing this with you is ultimately because if you're going to trade order blocks or supply and demand levels or volume rotations, it makes sense to trade the higher volume markets than the thinner markets because they normally uh, they normally have uh, a little bit more expected reactions to them. They'll they'll respond a bit better. 
right? <laughs> I see a bunch of questions coming in here, guys. Please bear with me. I'm not here to answer questions just yet. I'm going to teach the AMA and then I'll go into the chat box and we'll address a lot of stuff in a minute. So now that you understand the reason for the workspace layout, I've got a 12.5, I've got a 3,000, and I've got a 6,000. Each of these are the equivalent <laughs> to the uh, five minute fractal. Okay. So, what I want to do is I just want to talk a little bit about the SP for a second. Okay. And let's just go to the start of today. Let's just go in here and put on the session break so you guys can see it. Okay. There's the overnight session. And I think my day starts. <laughs> my day starts for um, 4.30. So I'm just going to draw a little line in the sand. Market open here is 4.30 in the afternoon. The S&P is right here. Okay, so that's market open. Okay, for me, that's your guys' market open at 9.30. That's my European time zone here. So there you go. <laughs> so I want to talk a little bit about, um, you know, there's two ways to trade these as a day trader. Okay, as a day trader, let's do this. Okay, there we go. And price action off, 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 perfect. I have everything turned off, okay, on purpose. You have three, four variable range candles. Remember, we talked about this yesterday. We talked about this yesterday in the webinar. There's four ways to use the software. You have price action, which is meant for tick charts, uh, time charts, volume charts, et cetera, okay? If you're going to use Renko's, then you want to use variable range. If you wanna use Renko's, then you wanna use market structure. If you wanna use the uni zones for supply and demand order blocks or traps and imbalances, then what you wanna do is you wanna use the price action mode. OK, now I want to talk about scalping for a second because I'm not looking at multi time frames for this decision. I'm literally just assessing, assessing the um, the market from a directional perspective. OK, and so when you look at this, you know, you've got a trade trend going down, you got a trend going up. Right. As a day trader, you have two decisions you're going to make. You're going to go with trend. So you're going to trade trend. or counter trend, okay? <laughs> a couple of things <laughs> that I would argue is that with trend, these are just some concepts. You know, it's nice to see a, a nice move out of the level before a test of order block, supplier demand, or trap, okay? <laughs> the other thing too is, is did the uh, area break structure or did it uh, take out another key AOI? Okay, so I'll give you an example. If I'm trading with trend down here, okay, and I'll just draw a little like <laughs> this little breakdown. So you can, you can, let me just grab a, like, I'm just going to start in the overnight just so you guys can see the concept. So here's the leg down. Okay. We get a pullback and then all of a sudden the market goes down here, right? Well, we close below that level on that candle. Okay. That was the close below that level. <laughs> At that point in time, this swing, okay, that swing is uh, is an important swing. Like it's it did its job. That swing that swing high did its job as a, as a trade. It, it, you got to remember, like for for this swing high to break structure, it had enough conviction to push the market down. Okay, so does everybody understand that? I just want to show you some some concepts around trend trading that you should be paying attention with market structure, even if it's not multi time frame, just so you can start ascertaining strong areas. So what I want to do is I want to start marking out circles around important swings in the market. Okay, <laughs> now 
this low, if we come down, if this low, yeah, that's a strong high, okay? This low, if this is a good low, if this is a strong low, its job should be to take out this high in control. Did it do its job? Did it take out that swing high? No, therefore it's a weak low. So if you had a level off of this low, it's a very high, high risk trade. It's a very high risk trade, okay? The job of this high is to then take out this low, which it did that. So if this comes up and puts in a rotation, is this a strong high at that time? Is this a strong high? Did that high break the lows yet? No, it didn't. So therefore, this is not a strong high. It came down. This low's job is to take out this high and to take out that high. Did it do that? No. So therefore, these lows are weak. And this high is weak, but this high is strong. It's a strong high. Okay, it's a strong high. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to uh, draw a little line here and just put a little line there, okay? Just, just so everybody remembers that that's kind of an important high. <laughs> then what ends up happening is this becomes internal structure. This is an internal structure and then this breaks down. Well, this is the weak low. This is the internal low that's a weak low, it's not important, this low. But if this is the low that is being targeted, then therefore the highest high before the next break of structure, okay, would therefore become the next high. Well, if you look, this created a pullback, this pulled back, this created an upswing, this broke down. This is technically the highest high that was before the, the true break of structure, okay? Because this low is not, this is internal structure. Does everybody see where I'm going with this? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, you know, keep mapping out the highs in control as we come back down, okay? So these are strong highs. Then this high broke the structure, this high, this low, this high push. I'm just gonna giving you an idea how to see structure, okay? But why would this be important? Well, if you're gonna trade levels, okay, you're gonna trade levels of supplier demand, you wanna ask yourself, are they coming out of areas that have a lot of merit? Or are they just levels on the chart, right? Are they zones on the chart? <laughs> and normally what you wanna do is you wanna trade the levels that are breaking the structure, breaking the structure, right? And so this would be considered the last break of structure swing high that came down. This is the high, but it didn't close the low. This is the, the, the lower high retest that took out the lows. <laughs> so arguably you could put a line here and you could put another line here. There, just so you understand that. And then this was an internal high. This was the low that closed below structure. So there it is right there, okay. <laughs> and. What I'm going to do is I'm not going to talk about this leg up. I just want to talk about this leg down for a second. This leg down. Okay. And so, and, and this, this, this weak low in here is not important. Like this low, this low did not, this low did not do its job taking out this and this low coming up in here. The only way that this would be a threat is if this were to push through. It hasn't. So why is this important for us here? Let's go back to the zones. And I'm gonna go in and we're gonna just put on uh, order blocks for one, okay? Just order blocks, okay? You're gonna see the thrust candles that are creating the order blocks. Now, you don't know that this order block that rotates down this retest here, you don't know if that retest is gonna break the structure. So this is what you call it. You kind of play your, your, you know, when you play poker, 
you know, when you play poker and you, you, you put the blinds down, you have to pay the, the, low, the, the small blinds and the big blinds. This would kind of be like you, you, you pay the blinds to see the hand, but you don't really know if it's going to work or not, or if you have a, if you even have a hand because it hasn't proven anything until this candle closed, right? However, if you take a look at this order block, when they came back up to retest it, it was pretty powerful, right? It was very powerful. And so if I go in here and I just put on uh, broken zones, I just want you to understand the reason that this is pretty powerful in here. The other reason this is very powerful is that if you just take the Fibonacci grids and you map out the impulse leg down, you're in deep retail. You're in deep retail coming out of a strong level of structure, okay, off of an order block, okay, that was never tested. You see, even though this looked tested in this, this is not a tested level. That was my mistake. I thought they tested it on the, on the way down, but they did. This type of a trade is very, very high probability. It's with direction. It's coming out of a strong high. It's coming out of a fresh order block, right? And it's very, very high probability, okay? Now the job, the job of this, it's with direction. So when you start asking yourself, where should I be targeting this type of a trade? It's not so much I wanna get 0.5 or one to one. It's kind of like, what is the job of the market? Now, most of the prop traders in here know that you can't really trade for big R multiples until you built a buffer. But at the same time, if you understand the power of structure, you understand the job of market structure is if this is a strong high and this low fails to do its job, it should take back down the lows. That is the job of this. So if we go down here and we just target, you know, this area, what you can do is you can see a two to one target will breach that low. Okay. And they come back down. This could be kind of like a chasing entry. I wouldn't trade that on the way back down because you've already missed the trade. Okay. And this to me is a two to one target achieved off that level. Right. Now, if you're looking at taking this trade on the next order block down, you are now banking on a much higher risk trade. I'm going to explain why. Because we've already came down to test the lows and we failed to clear below it, which means this is now a weak high. Trading that supply level of order block out of that weak high has much less probability because it failed to do its job. This high failed to do its job. So this is why looking at these two zones, they are not created equal. They are not created equal. They both tell you an order block. One has high probability and one has medium probability. Which one should we be trading? The one coming out of a strong level. Okay, now let's continue down. Let's continue down. You see Abishan, it worked. The first trade worked. The second one was a riskier play. Okay, now, remember what I said? If we were to trade this level here, okay, to me, this is not the low to break. This is not the low to break. Why? It's not the strong low. This low failed to take out this high, which means it's a weak low, which means this is a weak low, which means this needs to close below both of them in order for the next swing to be valid. Does everybody understand that? In order for this zone to have merit for a good trade, you want to see it close below the structure levels. You want to see it take out the levels that are holding this last internal structure up. So therefore, when it does this, what do you think that level just explains? This was the one that you'd be gambling on because you don't know if this is a liquidity grab in here where they want to run stops and flip the, flip the script. You don't know that. And that happens often a lot of times where you take a level in a wrong area, not knowing what it's doing. Well, guess what? The close of this candle is a volume candle, right? It's a volume candle. And it proved a lot of conviction. Strong move out, came off of a high that cleared two levels of structure. This is what we call 
a very important area of interest. It's not in the it's not in some random place. It's a clean area of interest. So if we get an opportunity to trade this, okay, this level right here on that test, where should the target be? This is now I know that most of like the Bobbies and the Roy's and the other traders in the prop program, they're going to trade for their, you know, 0.5 R multiples. Are we with direction or are we against direction here? Are we trading with the trend or are we trading against the trend? We're trading with the trend, okay? So if we know that this has a high probability to trade this level because it cleared structure and it produced an order block breaking key levels, okay? Then wouldn't you make sense for us to achieve at least a decent target where you could look to achieve a little bit more out of it than just kind of going for a 0.5, right? Like, you know, you could go for a one-to-one -one on that trade, easy. That, that first line is a one-to-one -one target. And this is the difference between, I know I've seen a couple of comments. Um, I seen a couple of traders like Lee, a few of you were saying, you know, you really like trading for one-to-ones more than 0.5 to ones because they, it's a little easier to make back your stop outs. How many of you guys would agree that sometimes trading for a 0.5 R multiple, yes, it's really good when, you're hitting, but when you do take a loss, it's really a little harder to get back mentally. Anybody here feel that sometimes? Anybody here feel like whenever they, they, it is a mental game, but anybody here ever feel like when you do trade for 0.5 R multiples, not that you can't trade for one-to-one. -one. If you're going to trade for one-to-one, -one, just know that you're trailing drawdowns in the, in the prop firms. You got to be very careful. You need to make sure that your trades are giving you one-to-one -one because if not, then, then ultimately, you know, you're going to give money back to the market. You're going to lose your, that risk threshold in the prop program. Like for, this is for all of you that are prop traders in here, right? It's all about location, Bradley. Exactly. So this was a great example of an area that gave at least you got a one-to-one -to -one out of that trade. In this situation, right with trend you could have easily got a one-to-one -one out of these trades you don't need to swing for the fences and always go two to one and three to one and all that that's not the objective of the prop program and it's definitely not the objective of every trader that's scalping a one-to-one -one system with a high hit rate is very very profitable you just need to make sure that you go back and you study the levels that you're trading every one of these if i just go and edit this to a one-to-one -one threshold i'll just show you here One to one. Okay. I'm just going to go and mark these charts up. Okay. And if the stop, if the, if the, if the level fails, it fails, right? So we're not trading anything more, right? Could you have gotten more out of it? Yes, you could, but that's not your objective. Would you be trading, say, this order block? First and foremost, taking this trade right here is against structure. So I just want you to pay attention here. Just knowing this, knowing this, this came down pushed up, came back down, closed up, okay? So what a lot of traders are thinking right now is that, okay, we're going into an uptrend. We broke structure. We had a change of character. We're on the right side of the market. No, you're not. This is a very bearish market still, and I'll explain why. This low's job is to take out that high. This low is so insignificant that anybody that sees this as a trend change doesn't understand what's going on in the market. And this is the difference between a winning trader hitting it and a, and a trader that's still trying to figure out the novices of the space, right? Like, like I'm here to show you that this low is a very insignificant piece of information until it took out a strong high. And that's why if we had a demand zone in here, which we did, there was a level in here. I just have order blocks on for a reason. If I go and turn SD zones on, you're going to see there's probably going to be a, see this demand zone in here? It's a great example of just having different software doing different things for different reasons. This order block was also a supply zone. Okay. This order block was also a supply zone here. So that was a double, that was a double zone we call that. But you see this demand zone in here like this using the SD price breaks? It's a demand zone coming out of an area that a lot of traders are going to say, oh, I got demand. And yeah, you could have got a 
a, a base hit maybe for a 0.5 and but but it's a very very risky trade to take this long on the wrong side of the market okay the other thing too is that even this demand zone is a terrible trade if you were to basically understand why because the job of this low is to take out that high and it didn't do that yet so this is why not all zones are created equal, even as a day trader and as a scalper. Let's put on the order blocks again, okay? We don't even have an order block down here. This is a demand zone, but it's not an order block demand zone. So I'm just gonna keep it real and keep going. Take a look how it just plummets through those areas. Now watch this zone here. Remember what I said about this zone? It's tested, it's tested here, but this swing high took out two key levels of structure. So I'm gonna just put a little uh, line here. And I'm doing bar by bar on purpose so that traders can learn as we go through today's price action on the S&P. I wanna use a current example, right? I wanna use a current market. Let's continue down, let's continue down. Okay, so this is still a weak low. This is still a weak low. But what I normally like to do, and I'll just explain, I want to, I like, you know, you remember when I was saying this, like when you have this, Like if I have a price action like this, this was a strong high and this is the low that held the pullback, okay? What you wanna do if you're really still struggling with retail and value for curve locations, you only map your curve around the strong high and the, the low that pulls the pullback. So I would be wrapping a FIB grid around this to this. I would not be wrapping a FIB grid around this internal structure. I would wrap a FIB grid around this to this because that was the high that broke the structure. I would wrap the fib grip around this to this, because if you really want to understand the impulse leg, if you look at where the market pulled back to on every one of those impulse legs, above 50. Where did that test happen? Right at the 50, right at the 50 right in retail. If I was to do this on the next level, fifty. And what you can do, if you really want to be a really good trader and not be afraid of missing the move, this is all internal structure. So let me explain something here. Until this high is breached, we're bearish. Until this high is breached, we're bearish. I know a lot of people don't understand that because they see an uptrend, higher high, higher low, higher high. Yeah, we are not in an uptrend. This is a strong high. This is the low that held the first pullback. Therefore, this is the grid of impulse that everybody's gonna be paying attention to. Look at the order block and let me kind of refine the entry. Where did the market trade to on the tests of it originally? Do you see this retest that came up into this order block right here? Okay. Therefore, a smart trader that is disciplined and is willing to be patient, not afraid to miss out on the trade. Where did they test it? Where did they take it? Right to where the order block got tested before. They traded up to suck in that inducement. And there was a great trade. Like this is a great trade right here. As a day trader, that's a really great trade because it's really, really high probability. It's, a, it's deep in retail on the impulse leg. You're waiting for a fresh order flow test inside that zone, and you're still bearish based off trend structure. You say, yeah, but Sean, we're making higher highs. No, but that you, that's not trading the structure. This is internal structure. Okay? And until we violate this low or we violate that high, we're still bearish on the inside of that leg. Do you guys understand this? This is a new concept for a lot of traders that haven't really learned market structure. But when you combine this with order blocks, even on a one time frame chart as a scalper, not even looking at higher time frames. Okay. Now, I'll give you an example. I got another order block here and I got another demand zone in here. Okay. So now I got this demand zone here creeping its head. And I got this new order block that's creeping its head. Well, guess what? This low didn't do its job to take out the strong high. 
And this order block didn't do its job to take out this low yet. So should we even be touching these levels? Should we even be concerning ourselves with very high risk trades? Like, let's get serious here, guys. You're trading for funding value. You're trying to get funded, stay funded. Or even if you're new in here and you've never been in my programs or you've never heard from any of my instructors, like your job is to make money, not be in the market. So I'm gonna bypass on these two levels until I see a major change character. Let's continue up, wait, boom. Okay, so let's just stop right there. This is the first time, this is the first time that we've changed character today. Okay, this is the first time that we changed character from a, from a major trend structure, not internal. This is the first time we've, we've moved to bullish that bar right there. And why I like volume charts is because volume tells the story. Volume will clear that structure and it closed at the highs. Therefore, we cleared the high that was holding the market in a bearish sentiment and we closed it with high volume. Well, guess what? This was the last low that took out that high. And that also created the bullish order block. Now, a couple things I want to point out. Okay, look at the retest of the strong low. Look at this retest off this order block that cleared that high. That was the first time the bulls got real aggressive. Do you see this? Like, yeah, this kind of pumped up a bit, but I want you to pay attention here to, let's just take off the resistance now. Let's just do this now, okay. That was the that was the high here, okay. And that was a different zone. Tagged it like that, okay. And this was the other one here. This was definitely a one to one that we got out of it. Just so that you know, there was the test on this candle here. Okay, got a one to one out of that level, and the order block came from here. That high was breached there, so let's just do that. So that was the one to one trade there. So. Now I want you to understand something is that this was the high in control. It got violated. Now, you could have done the same thing over here and bid a little bit more aggressive and got in at the first touch. Like this, I know a lot of traders that'll do that. They'll get in at the first touch. There's still, you still would have been profitable either way. This one here, if you didn't get in on the first touch and you had a pending order down below this tested level, you would have missed the next trade. So you got to decide. You know, are you going to be a little bit more aggressive if you're on the right side of the market? It's your call. I can't, there's no perfect answer on every single trade. If you're trying to be perfect in everything, you can't. It's not, not as it exist, especially timing the market on small time frames, right? You're already doing market timing close enough. But take a look at the next level here. There was the test. Okay. So this was the, this was the test here. There was another trade here. Direct. I'm only looking at direction, by the way. If you notice that, I haven't touched anything counter trend yet. You haven't seen, I haven't even talked about counter trend yet. Okay. So there's your one-to-one -one on that trade. Okay. Now, before we go in and take this order block level, you see this order block here? Okay. I just want you to understand that this was the low that broke the swing. Okay. And therefore the next pullback, did it close above the high that created the pullback? Yes, it did. Okay. Now the job of this high is to take out this low. The job of this low is to take out this high. Did this low do its job? I know it's a tongue twister guys. I, I apologize. I, this, is, this is why most people don't understand structure properly is because they can't understand that, but I'll, I'll make sure we do more lessons. Did this low, take out the high that created the pullback. So did that low do its job? In the definition of trend trades, that structure low became strong because it closed above the high that created the pullback. Well, guess what? If it just kept going up it going up and pulled back, you got a trade. If it pulled back right away, you got a trade because the low did its job. So let's just measure the one-to-one -one on this. Okay. Don't know if we got the full one-to-one, -one. we'll see. 
It's kind of a big level. Maybe not. There it is. He did get it eventually. I don't know. I didn't trade today. I'm in Europe, guys. I'm I'm on vacay. <laughs> so here's the, here it did. You did get your target. You would have definitely got your target. Now I want to ask you a question. Let's go back to this zone for a second. Is there anything here that makes sense to touch this level? Did this zone do anything? This zone here. This demand zone broke some structure, but was it a major high? It was a break of a high, okay? It wasn't a huge high, it wasn't a strong high, it wasn't anything crazy, but it wasn't a pullback. This high was already violated. This high was already violated by this demand zone. So this was just an extension of this demand zone, which means this to me is, you're already in the other demand. Like, you're already at the same level that created the level. You're better off trading the, the original zone, okay? So it came back. If you did take this trade here, you could have got a one-to-one. -one. It did give a one-to-one -one on that trade to that high, but it's still not really worthy. Now, before you start jumping into the next pullback, the job of this high is to take out this low. Did it do that? Did this high take out this low? No, therefore it's a weak high, okay? Did this low close above? Let's just wait to the next candle. Yes, it did. So guess what? That's a strong low again. Another strong low, another order block. Okay, let's continue up. Now, let's continue up. Did this low do its job? A lot of traders get excited. Oh, new order block, get in, boom, zone, buy. No, did this low? It's blue and it's broken. I have the, this is from back testing. So in fresh levels, it'll be bright green. You can change the colors however you choose to. This low didn't do its job. You wouldn't trade that demand zone. You're going to get stopped. This low didn't do its job. You're going to get slapped. Okay, now wait a second. Remember, Everybody here thinks that we're bearish. Well, I have news for you. We're not bearish. We're not bearish until we take out this low. We're not bearish until we take out this low. Okay. However, okay, if we come into this demand in this area, you got a level on a level in here. So, you know, depending on how you want to place your stop loss, I want you to pay attention to how they come into this level. They did give a reaction out of this. A change of character happened here. So this is an internal downtrend, but it's not bullish. It's not bearish until we truly take out this. This is the last swing low. So this is the last swing low. As soon as we take out this, we are now bearish. So trading this here, trading this type of a trade here, okay? It is valid, but it's higher risk because you're still going against the structure, but it is still bullish. So it's no different than say trading this level here. This level here was going against the internal structure, okay? It's not wrong for doing that, okay? One thing I want you to pay attention to, which kind of new traders won't see, and this is why it's called an AMA, I want you to understand that the job of the sellers is to sweep the liquidity on these lows because this is a fresh order block from this level down. So what's gonna happen a lot of times is they'll see fresh demand in here. They'll drive it through to run the liquidity here. This is called a liquidity sweep in this level right here because it's a strong low. And therefore, if you notice, if you did trade for a 0.5, like our prop traders do, because they definitely do trade for 0.5. Um, I would argue, like, you know, if you really want to ask, like, for like, hey, just tell me exactly how to set my trade management, I would tell you how I would do this, guys. This is still with trend, with structure on both sides of internal and major. So I would trade for one to one. This one I would trade for one to one. We're still with structure. This one I would trade for 0.5 to one. 
because even though we're bearish, we're still going against the market. Do you guys understand that? Here, I would trade for a one-to-one. -one. We're on the right side of both markets, right? Here, because we're coming into an area of demand, yes, we're still bullish on terms of big structure. However, we're actually counter trend on the internal. Do you guys see this? So what I would do is I would set this to be a 0.5R multiple because you would have reached a 0.5 on this. And you, you gotta remember your counter trend internal structure but you're, you're with the main trend of the market. And this is what a lot of traders don't understand. They think you're bearish here. We're not. We're not bearish until we close here. Now we're technically bearish on that low. Okay. So what I would be doing here in this situation is I would be looking for sell order blocks to be tapping into. Now watch what they do. They come right up into this area. Now let's wait here for a second. Let's just go back. This is real time. I have order blocks on. I don't have an order block there. Do I have a supply zone there? This is where I'd be calculating the grid. Just so you understand, this is the first time we've moved bearish in the day. This is the first time we've moved bearish. This is the high of the day. Okay, Just like this. Okay, This is retail. You could technically take all of these highs, if you choose to. We're definitely getting up into this area. And if you put on supply zones, recalculate that, you got supply right there. Now, you're bearish. You're bearish because this took out a swing low. So they're gonna do a retest of that high. That's a retest of the high. If they come back up and if the bears are truly gonna drive the market, they're gonna drop it down. This will be the first time the retest happens for the market as a day trader. You just need to run. This is a downtrend and the market goes into an uptrend. And this is the first time the market's going to try to test the downtrend again as an intraday trading environment. However, here's a great example of a trade. If you were to take a trend trade, after we close below that strong low, as a day trader, you got the close. Retest in here. We're still pretty cheap on that leg, but got a one to one, a one to one for all of you 0.5 traders in there. It's still a it's still a with trend trade coming into the order block. That's a supply zone. You didn't have an order block. That's a supply zone. Okay, but it isn't. It's it's still following the same concept, right? Like. You got to remember, like, if you want to trade order blocks or supply and demand levels, you can have them both on and you can see the levels. Like, I can turn on both of them. Okay, you're going to have just a couple extra levels. As long as you're reading the structure right, you'll know which zones to touch, right? And what would you guys like me to do a level, a lesson on market structure next? I think a lot of traders want to know how to use market structure. And I think what I could be doing from an AMA is really kind of going through uh, strong highs and lows, swings and controls. I'd love to teach it. I've been spending months on it. And I know it's a concept that most people don't understand, but it's the most important concept. Price leads everything. It is the edge, Bradley. Yeah, it is the edge. It's knowing the market. When you understand that, you don't have to be like, oh, we're in an uptrend. No, I know that we are not technically moving into a bearish sentiment market until it close below that low, which tells me that if they do breach it, we expect a pullback for the retest of the highs. It has to happen unless we're in some randomly crazy sell-off. Well, then we'll just be one directional. And so if you take a look, there was another trade okay, coming into this. Here was another trade. Now, remember... We are bearish, like I said, we are bearish in terms of big structure. But I have a question for you. This is an internal uptrend, right? This is a strong high. This is the low that holds the pullback. So technically, we're still bearish until we breach this high, correct? We're still bearish. But are we against the internal structure? Yes, I would go with a shorter target in here. I would trade for a much shorter target because you're trading against the push. Okay, so let's just take a look. Did you guys, would we have gotten, would we have gotten, let's take a look here. I don't know if you would have gotten uh, a 0.5 yet. Maybe, maybe got the 0.5 out of that. 
definitely I could adjust it just to see. You would have tagged 0. 0.5. So you might have got the fill on a 0. 0.5 fill. Like I always, and like most of everybody in here that, uh, well, I have a, we're, I have a, I have a program that's being built for that. So I'm building the, I'm building the golden goose, if you will. I've been working with some vendor partners and some developers and some structure traders, and I'm building an, uh, a structure tool that will, it'll be the, the Aladdin's lamp, so to speak, if you will, because a lot of people don't understand it. So I'm building a tool that's going to tell everybody that. So you know if you're on the strong majors or if you're an internal level, et cetera. So you could have got a 0.5 out of that in, and that type of stuff. Yeah, so, so you always trade with structure, LM saying, but change of character only affects your targets 0.25 versus 0.5. Well, you, if you're with the structure, like if you're with the structure with big picture, like this is with big picture, you broke the swing low. So this is a trend trade. They could have dropped it here, but I would still go for a 0.5 or a, a 0.5 to a one-to-one. -one on these with trend with structure on these internal counter trend trades you're still bearish but that doesn't mean that the retest doesn't want to come up here a lot of times the retest will come up and sweep liquidity here they'll come up and they'll just sweep it and then drop it because they just know that that's they know they're getting ready to tank so what they do is they suck everybody in and that, that's like they'll they'll like see this high wick right now that's happening they're sweeping the liquidity here here and here if they are going to go, if they are going to drop it, because this was the first major break of break of structure, so I wouldn't be I wouldn't be trading anything knowing that until I seen some sentiment. I would wait for the market to trade short again, and then wait to get back down on that because that'll give me directional on both sides of the market. So, and, and you'll notice, like, remember how we talk about it? Like this, this high is weak. This high is weak. Therefore, this high didn't do its job to take out this low, and therefore this supply is useless. So right now, there's nothing to do other than to wait until the change of character happens. And, and in all honesty, like you can take a look at this low. This low did its job to take out this high. It didn't close above it, though. So that's, the, that's why I wouldn't trade long here yet. We have not had a close above these highs. Until we have a close above these highs, would I ever look to engage back trading long on that side of the market? And what I would truly do is I would truly wait for at least, um, I would at least wait for some information on, you know, are they going to pull back at least 50% into value and trade a little bit longer, that, that type of thing. You could trade counter trend if you choose to, but it's, it's a little bit more aggressive. You know, it's a little bit more aggressive, Right. So, you know, and, and I, think, I think just knowing just how to stay on the right side of the market uh, and, and that'll allow you, like if I go in here, put both, okay? And I just go to the tested levels, like, let me go back and turn off broken here for you a second, right? You can see the liquidity sweep that happened. Like I was explaining, they came right down into that liquidity sweep, into the order block, swept the lows, and then pumped back up. Well, this is a weak high. This is a strong high. We finally got a close above it. We finally got a close above the strong high, but we have not been able to close above these highs. What I would argue would be a pretty strong trade. Well, Sally, not necessarily. No, it's not. It's, I would argue that that's, that's, a, that's an opinion. Yeah, you know, you, you're, you know, to a scalper, it's, uh, you know, it depends on what your idea of scalping is, right? Like I just mapped out, six trades since uh, pre-market, um, right? Six trades across being directional in today's market. You know, if you're a, a day trader, six trades is pretty solid. A scalper, if you're looking for 10 to 15 trades, I would argue that you better be really good because commissions are going to eat you alive, right? But it's opinion, right? I'm not right or wrong and neither is anyone else. So let's talk a little bit about this last demand zone. Okay, it's still very good. To me, it is because this low broke this area. This demand zone held the retest that pushed and closed above. 
So now what I would be doing is I'd be looking at the liquidity grab here. This would be a really strategic trade. If they come back down in here, it <laughs> doesn't matter, Tom. Uh, it doesn't matter if you understand liquidity. This is an order block. This is not necessarily supplier demand. Yeah. So just you understand the difference between traditional supply and demand traders trading only fresh zones. Yes, that's, that's important, especially if you're counter direction. But this would be direction. And if they sweep the liquidity to be able to get back up above, I, I, I still need to see a close above the highs. Like we still haven't seen it. You see what they're doing there? It's inducement. So right now, if you take a look, like they haven't closed above these highs. We closed above the strong high, but they haven't closed above the highs. You see how they're sucking? That's inducement. And remember, as soon as that happens, you know, the next, the next opportunity would be to take the liquidity sweep here to the long side. So this would be a really solid area for an order block trade because this is liquidity sweep. And if they can get back down there, then you're looking at a trade right here, right there. That's the next area because it's fresh liquidity in the order block. This Just because this has been tested, that means the orders from here to here have been consumed. But until we close, until we close below that low, we're still bullish. Do you understand that? Because this low, has not taken out anything yet. And if they come back down to test it, this is the strong low. Make sense? I know it's a little bit of a twister there, but I would really like them to see come down and tag that liquidity at 64. That would be a liquidity grab. It would be considered a sweep and uh, it's in an order block. And that would be really, really strong day trading probabilities for the S&P right now in real time because it's with direction, with big picture structure, and uh, you have a reason to take it. Yeah, well, Felipe, if you're using volume charts, are you using the MES or using the S&P contract? Same one, 12.5? Yeah, it's just a data feed. Data feeds are always gonna happen on tick data, right? Tick data, yeah. Might be. I'm on. I'm on uh, kinetic right now. Yeah, I'm on kinetic. Yeah. yeah. You don't need to switch. It's uh, just just know this that you know they they're gonna they're, if they're gonna truly like you remember this is the test. Remember a close above the highs should induce a pullback. Right? Should induce a pullback. Okay. If you're, you know, for the MES, Lee, I would use 6,500. For the full contract, I would use 12.5. Yeah. Use a document that I created for you. There's a reason for it. Right here. This trades one and a half times the volume contract. Right. So now, that being said, if you're going to do the same on the NASDAQ, with the NASDAQ's already crushing it, already pumping the highs. So you already had the trade on the NASDAQ. So I, you, you remember that this was the low. This low did its job and closed above that pullback high and all of these highs. This low took out that high, that high, and that high on the right side of the big picture trend. Well, guess what? Guess what happened as soon as the market tagged this order block? Demand zone, excuse me. Right there, boom, boom. Okay, big trade on the NASDAQ. That's an MNQ trade, and that's a pretty big trade considering, right? Now, if you wanted to just say, look at, I've got all the zones on. Let's turn off these and these and let's take a look. I haven't even had a chance to talk traps yet. I haven't even had a chance to talk traps. That, see, that's not a, an order block. That's just a demand zone, but the concept is the same. I would really argue that it's it's important to, you know, it's uh, normally if you want to have them both on, order blocks need a down bar to an up engulfing, down to an up engulfing. I have the candles colored for the basing candles because I can't tell if this is a down bar or an up bar. 
So what I would normally do is I would go in here and I would change the colors of the basing candles. So the basing bar up close, and I would ultimately look at basing bar down close. So you could, you could color the basing bar up closes, like maybe uh, a blue, and then, uh, you know, a down candle, or you could, you could go like an up close is white, and then a down close could be like blue. So that way you, you know if, uh, if it's a down bar, Right here, that's an up bar, so you know that that's not a that's not an order block. That's just a demand zone. If you have a a demand zone or a supply zone that is met with the order blocks, right? Like you need um, this would be an order block. Like any white bar, this here is an order block. Let's go and turn order blocks on. You'll see that these are order blocks here, but I can't tell the difference. I can't see the up or down candle, which is why I, you need to color them differently if you want to have supplier demand on or off. So if we look at the order blocks, there's no new order blocks in here. Really good fresh order block down here. But before you realize this, you just need to know this, that this is not the strong low anymore on the NASDAQ. Uh, this is a strong low, this is a strong low, which means if we break this, we are definitely bearish. We are moving into a bearish sentiment. So remember, you need to always understand the low in control. This is the low in control because we closed above the structure. So if it closes below this, I won't be looking for longs anymore. I'd be looking for shorts. I'm always looking to stay on the right side of the market. Why not? You don't have to. Uh, you don't have to worry about missing trades uh, on this. Now, now remember, like if you still think that the five minutes not giving enough movement, well, you you don't have to do these charts if you want to. You can easily just go to the converter and and pick whatever fractals you want. Just make sure you trade the high volume markets because they're the ones that matter. Take a look at crude oil. Jesus, if you look at crude oil today. And let's go and turn off traps. Traps are great, but I find the best for uh, uh, multi time frame, higher time frames. I think they're very, very good for higher time frame analysis. Order blocks. Okay. So, a good example would be understanding internal structure versus external structure. Okay. Um, if I just look at the market here, I'll just kind of explain when you come into the market open here in the morning, pre-market, this is pre-market. So let's just start here, pre-market, okay? And uh, this close structure down, this high, close below those lows. However, that's not necessarily an important low. Got to remember that. You, just because we had a close down doesn't mean it's the most important low. And this is really, really important. Really, really important here for a second. Go back a little bit, pay attention to the data. This low closed above this high. That's a strong push up. I would argue that that's a pretty strong low, okay? This high is the pullback. This low is a weak low. This low is a weak low. The job of this low is take out that high. Did it happen? No. The job of this low is take out that high. Did this low take out that high? This is the strong low that created this high. So what you would argue is that as soon as we took out that, that level there would be where we would want to start engaging in the shorts, okay? Well, as soon as we get the pullback, I just want you to pay attention to location for a second, right? Like location is really important. And if you're mapping out, like remember we talked about this yesterday in the, uh, location is key. Direction is key, wholesale and retail is key, and then understanding liquidity grabs, flips, where the zones are located, et cetera. Well, I just want to kind of point a few things out. This was the level that they were holding right here, okay? So there was a level of supply in here as well that'll be there once we turn it on. This order block, okay, down here, it closed, okay, it did close, but I want you to pay attention, okay? 
I want you to pay attention to something. 1430 is pre-market. Where are we in this leg? Like taking a trend trade in here with an immediate impulse up. To me, if I was to take a trend trade, I'd want to see a push down and then a pullback because we're really, really low. Like this is like, if you think about cheese being $3, cheese being a dollar, and you're selling for a dollar 25, you're risking a lot, right? And if I map out the grid just on the last impulse leg, pay attention, and crude is a big boy mark, you wanna pay attention to it, okay? Right there, okay? So even after they do put in a lower low, there it is right there. So just knowing this, okay, just, do you also look at volume profile on the impulse? We'll be getting to that. We'll be getting to that. That's I got some stuff coming on volume profiles as well. Okay. And uh, but I just want to kind of turn on the zones for a second. Good question, zone. <laughs> so you're gonna see here that uh, if I go broken, okay. So take a look at this. If I'm gonna map out this grid right here, 50%. Like realistically, the zone's not even valid based off of retail and wholesale. Like it's just, it, it's a really, a really dangerous place to be trading this zone. But let me just turn on the shorts for a second. Just, and this is why the software is so amazing. You have the ability to visually backtest the areas in which the trades work. If I just want to put on resistance for a second, turn it on. Okay. I just want you to pay attention to this. This was the high that led the broker structure that took out these three levels. This high is way more probable than the push through. That's the strong high. That high did its job. It did its job four times. Therefore, if you're going to trade a level, trade it from a key area. Okay. Now this ran down, ran the stops. You wouldn't have got the fill, but it's a much better trade if you did. Much better trade if you did. Okay, you're not going to get everything all the time. Now, take a look at this. Weak low, the job of this high is to take out that low. Okay, did it do its job? Yes, it did. Big, big sell off in crude. Okay, big, big sell off in crude. This was the supply that took out the low. This is the high that took out the low. Okay, so knowing that, let's watch this now. Let's wait for the pullback. There's the pullback right here. So what you can do is you can map out the grid. Okay, I, I like to try to keep traders out of the market just as much as I try to teach you how to use software to get into the market. Okay, and just so you understand this, okay. Okay, right now the job of this low is to take out that high. This is a weak high. Not shorting, seeing a supply zone here, you're asking to get slapped. Buying a demand zone in here, you're asking to get slapped. Why? It's a, it's a weak low. You have no idea that the market's gonna hold here. There's no proof. Okay, this low, this supply zone right here, just so you understand, this is the supply zone here. And uh, it might be an order block. We could turn it on. Take a look here. Yeah, it's an order block as well. But it's still very weak, meaning that there's, there's no reason to take this trade. You're sitting at the top. You're sitting at the low of the grid. Very cheap on the curve. Doesn't make sense to trade it. And you're going counter trend. Could you, got a, could you get a trade out of it? Sure. But your job is not to take every single level. Your job is to understand which ones are high risk and low risk. This is very high risk, and it's also counter internal structure. So if you're doing that, that would be one of those 0.25s Bobby talks about, because that's a 0.25 area. You're deep in curve, and you're also counter internal structure. Does that make sense? So if you're asking yourself about trade management, make sure that you understand that if you're going to do that. Okay. You would have got a little bit more out of it, but don't, but don't, 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 don't think that I'm sitting here trying to cherry pick, like be, be very specific with the way you want to run your business. Okay. This high didn't do its job. Trying to short that again is just really dangerous. This high did nothing. Trying to short here does nothing. Okay. These are weak highs. Okay. Now remember, this is a strong high. This is all internal structure. This is all internal structure. So I would wait this as you can see the reaction. Okay, this to me, this to me right here, counter trend. Remember your counter trend, going for a 0 0.5 maximum, maximum. Okay, I know a lot of traders that will only trade 0 
on counter trend and you would have been out on that first touch bar right there. It was a strong high rotation. It was already tested by the way. So it's still tested. Do you guys understand where I'm going with this guys? I'm trying to show you both counter trend and, and directional markets on this. Crude's a harder market too, just so you know. Okay. Now I know some traders that will say, well, we're in an uptrend. Yes, we are, but we never took out the strong high. So therefore by definition, the higher time frame is still very bearish. Okay, they're going to sweep liquidity until they close above there. We're now we're now bullish. I know that's hard to understand, but that's a big down up flush to the end crude. Okay, really down V shaped trading. And crude will do that sometimes. My suggestion would be to trade the S and P and the Nasdaq first, be sure trying to master crude. Crude's an independent beast. Does that make sense? Now the Nasdaq. Take a look at. Remember they came down. We 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 closed above, and you know we did get the rally. We're moving in the right direction. Okay. Are you guys learning from this? Did this make sense, Bob? Are you there? Yep. Got him on the mic. Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me? Sure can. Okay. So you've been trading the the order blocks a lot. Yes, yeah, since I gave you the software. Yep. With good success. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we did it in the room today, to be honest with you. Amazing. <laughs> and you guys you guys loving it? For all you prop trader program guys? Excellent. The job today, guys, is to just understand there's many ways to skin a cat, but what we're going to do is we're going to be teaching it to you over a, a course of several AMAs. This is not just looking at volume rotations. This is just order block trading. Are you using the SD levels at all or just order blocks? Uh, I mean, it was, we, I tried to do some SDs, but I was just so focused on the, the order blocks, you know, cause they were happening pretty, pretty quick this morning out of sure. the lows. So yeah, yeah, we, we took quite a few trades. So let me, let me do this for all the new guys in here. I built a tool that serves every purpose when it comes to supply and demand, order blocks, traps, imbalances, and structure, okay? Bobby's teaching in the classroom with my instructors as well. He's trading the software. He's only looking at one of the systems. Order blocks is just one of the systems inside the tool, right? So if you're in here trying to figure out like, which one should I start with? Which, if you wanna be in our prop program, you're probably gonna just trade what we're trading in the classroom right keep it simple does that mean you can't go and learn all this other stuff and understand structure knowing structure is critical what's your opinion on structure bobby uh i mean i look at it you know uh order blocks are a little bit more powerful um so i'm not really you'll too... trade counter trend oh yeah yeah but to understand structure is still important to everybody else especially on multi time frame and also the higher time frame knowing the trend line breaks the AT trader, knowing structure, areas of interest. It's really important to learn the structure and also know that if you're going to be trading counter trend, just know your trade management, right? Not swinging for the fences. How many base hits are you taking? You're taking 0.5s, 0.25s counter trend. What's your trade yeah. management on it? Yeah, so it was all point, point fives, and I don't remember how many trades we took total, um, but I took one break even and then all the rest were winners. Yeah. <laughs> we had some nail biter counter trend trades, Keith said. <laughs> yeah, but they still worked. They did still work. Yeah. And so that's the point, guys, is that we can teach you many different concepts. Um, I would argue the fact that, you know, just starting to learn a few things right out the gates. Um, the objective today was to kind of show you that, you know, you can use this in many different ways if you choose to. Um, the main objective is, uh, you know, it just depends, you know, how you want to use it the best way you feel comfortable using it. Uh, I think personally, um, you know, making sure when you take the order block trades, are you making sure they're coming off rotations though? Like they actually have to be levels that are coming off the structure rotation that closed or are you just uh, taking most, every single one of them? Yeah. I mean, for the most part, because of it was out of the lows, most of them were, uh, you know, breaks. There was a couple that weren't, but, but mostly they were breaks. Right. So basically levels that are breaking structure, just making sure any one of them that are breaking structure. I'll give you yeah. an example for those of Not you- Not all of them did we're... though. Not all no. of them broke structure. No, but I'll give you an example. Any trade 
traders, if you're wondering what we're talking about, if you come out, that's a structure break, right? That's a structure break, a trend trade. These are structure breaks. If an order block came here, an order block came here, those are trades. So any trades that he's referring to with regards to breaking structure, this is an order block structure trade. This is an order block structure trade, right? This would be an order block structure trade, testing it, reaction, right? So if you just were to go back and back test all of the broken levels for all of the order blocks that broke structure coming out of it, you know, you, I'm sure you're going to see some numbers that you're not used to seeing. Uh, now that's all in the eyes of the traders that are managing the trades. So one of the things that I want to talk to you about this guys is that, you know, as a prop trader, you're trading for small objectives or as somebody that's in here for the first time, you may be like, what are you crazy? You risk a dollar to make 50 cents. That's impossible. But yet we've got traders and our instructors teach it on purpose because you can't basically beat the trailing drawdowns if you're swinging for the fences all the time. So just know that there's a reason and there's a purpose for things. The uni zones is going to be used in the trading room. So Bobby and both Roy and Bobby are going to be using it in the classroom. So if you're in the prop program, I strongly encourage you to get it, download it, get familiar with the functions, get familiar with the tools, get familiar with it so that you can be aware of what we're doing. Uh, for those of you that are in here and you're, you're just joining us as a webinar attendee, welcome. You know, you're in the right place. I would strongly, you know, take a look at both the prop program and the uni zones because the prop program is where all the prop traders hang out. And also the uni zones are being used in the classroom. So Roy, you there, buddy? I think he left. Sorry, I was. Uh, can you I always me? catch I was you guys off word. Yeah. <laughs> so you had a good day. You had a good week. Yeah, yeah, we had a good week. Um, all four, yeah, all four days we had green days in the trade room. Crushing it. Yep, so. Yep. Um. You will have to purchase the uni zones, Andy. Yes. Yeah. It costs, it costs a lot of money to build the software. It takes a lot of people to do it. So yeah, software comes as a purchase. Yeah. So what I'll do is, um, you know, if you have questions, type them in the chat box. Um, did you guys learn something today? Okay. If you guys did type a yes in the chat box, um, you know, Bobby and Roy, you guys got it handled. Uh, thank you guys for joining us for today's AMA. Um, you know, this is, uh, we got lots to learn, lots to teach. We got lots of experience here, you know, collectively. <laughs> and, uh, for those of you that have not purchased the uni zones and you're not in the prop program, Jim's going to post the links now here for you guys to use and to take advantage of. Yeah, this is for anyone who's not in the prop program. Uh, if you're in the prop program, you can, you know, purchase directly inside of the back end. The links are there for you. Right. So, uh, you know, you'll be able to take advantage of that. And, uh, Guys, uh, <laughs> well, Todd, I could argue that, um, I don't know, like how much money did you make this week trading it? Uh, how many funded accounts are you trading, Bobby? And how many funded accounts are you trading, Roy? Like performance results is so last year, right? Everyone wants performance. We only have funded traders that run our, tr our trading rooms, Todd, and we trade anywhere between five and 10 funded accounts at a time. How many funded accounts do you got running right now, Roy? 10. 10, you, you're trading 10 funded accounts? Yeah. Um, how many, Bobby, how many funded accounts you got? I have uh, 10 and then a personal. So I'm running 11. 11 funded accounts, Todd. So we only run funded accounts for trading educators. We're only trading funded accounts in the trade rooms. Uh, we only trade real for, it's real for us. It's not uh, just trying to sell the sizzle and figure it out. Like this is real trading systems. So how much are they making? Uh, how much Todd, uh, Todd wants to know how much money you make in Bobby on average on a week. I know we talked about this before, but uh, quite a bit. We did. Uh, I traded the micros today in the room, you know, just to make sure that we were all in sync. And uh, I was trading five lots for both ES and the NQ and, you know, just trading five lots in all the trades that we took. Uh, I, I made nine, 900 today, just in that, uh, one one account just one account though right so you times that across 11 yeah i didn't trade them all because i was having some uh snafus with uh yeah rhythmic yeah rhythmic had some issues and we got that worked out i spoke to daryl and the team and they've got that yeah out. but yeah they uh i mean yeah five accounts i mean if you're trading five lots today john all the, you would have made uh 900 900 yeah, mm -hmm. just on micros trading all the trades. Yeah. Yeah, in one account. <laughs> yeah. 
So, and there's a lot bigger days than that. I mean, uh, this is, uh, I think Bobby was trading less accounts because he had technical issues as well with their rhythmic and stuff. So, so anyways, guys, um, great, great, great feedback. Great, great audience. Um, you know, glad to have you guys here. Uh, I'm going to sign off for this week's AMA. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Um, Jim, if you can put the links in here again and just make sure everybody gets that. Um, um, no, I, I only use kinetic when I'm on the road and just traveling. Like I'm not trading right now. I'm, uh, I, I use apex and rhythmic for when I'm, when I'm in the office, so to speak, right. I'm on vacation. I'm just doing these events to help, uh, help everybody kind of get to where they need to be. Thank God I have a patient fiance and a loving family because <laughs> it's nine 30 at night here. Yeah. Hey, Jim. Yes. We'll send out the recording. We'll get the recording sent out once it's processed. And I'll send this workspace out too, because this is a, an entire uni uni zone scalping and big picture trading environment. Right. So another thing too here, guys, I'm going to run a poll. Um, and this is a poll for non prop trader guys, right? <laughs> um, this is for non prop traders. Um, everybody in the prop program, your links are in the back end. Do me a favor and just let us know if you're if you're planning on taking advantage. The offer is ending very soon. Uh, we're only leaving the launch pricing open for uh, for I think another day. I think it closes tomorrow. So I just need to know if you're going to take the fifty percent off opportunity because if not, the prices are going up. And it's just it is what it is, right? It's uh, you get one chance to save a ton of money, and if not, then you know I understand. If you're not sure, then what I'll do is I'll send uh, I'll send another poll here in a minute, and uh, I'll get Jim to follow up with you. Yeah. Yeah, Ashley has me hiking hikes in the bush and we're just doing a lot of great things. So it's been a great family time. Yeah. Got to, we went fishing yesterday and we cooked our own fish. Uh, <laughs> they cooked it right on the spot for us. It was great. Yeah. Cool guys. So I'm going to drive another pole here and, and that's for all the non-prop traders in here. And for everybody in here that is still trying to figure out, you know, is this for me or is this, uh, is I need help? I'm on the fence. I'm not sure I understand some of the stuff these guys are talking about. Looks like hocus pocus, whatever you guys are doing. Uh, either way, um, I just want to let you know that uh, we got a team that can help you. So I'm going to send a poll here. And uh, if you'd like for our team to reach out to you, get on a call and, uh, you know, get in touch with you guys, I'd be, you know, that's what we're here for. You know, if we, if you want our guys to, you know, get in touch with you and, and, and answer your questions. And if you have any questions, you know, just let us know and, and we'll, uh, you know, have our team reach out to you. And that way we could do some screen sharing or we could figure out what your needs are and kind of talk to you a little bit of our prop program and the uni zones discount stuff. Just remember the uni zones launch is ending tomorrow and therefore pricing will definitely be a lot more expensive. So, you know, I'm not, don't, I don't believe in this pressure sale stuff. We just have cutoffs on purpose because, you know, it's a business and we have a lot of uh, other products that we're developing and releasing and stuff. So, you know, you know, it's uh, if you like it, great. If you don't, you know, no harm, no, no foul. Right. So Roy, Bobby, great trading this week, guys. Thanks for running a great room. I'm sure the users uh, loved it. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy the new software guys. And uh, I'm going to go and enjoy my vacation if that's okay with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> all right thank you sean yeah we'll be back monday guys prop traders we'll be back monday morning so um trade rooms close tomorrow but everybody have a great weekend and we'll see you then yep traders, and if you guys have any questions need any help on this let me know and we'll we'll set something up so we can connect further and and uh help you out so all right guys have a fantastic day thanks bobby roy jim everybody enjoy the rest of your guys's day happy trading trade well trade safe Bye bye care.